Okay, so we're now recording. Um, all right, so let's get this started, Nicola. Um, now, obviously, you've posted your transformation again. Now, again. <laughs> a lot of people who are only obviously following you more recently don't know there's a bit more history behind this. So this is this is the third time now, isn't it? No. <laughs> is it not the third time? Sixth time. Sixth time. In twenty in twenty years. In twenty years. Yeah, okay, in twenty years. Okay. And that's probably the third time with you. Yeah, so I think if I, I mean I was looking back through my files this morning and I think one of my first meal plans with you was the eighteenth of July twenty thirteen. I think I still have that on email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You also don't like archive like me either. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I'm trying to remember back to today, and obviously, you know, that was ages ago now. But you know, if I remember rightly, um, you came to us at Evo Fitness then, having lost, I think, 50 kilos prior with a dietitian, yes. regained yes. it. Yes, because why not? Because <laughs> who doesn't like a challenge? <laughs> Uh, and you know you were looking to make a change again and if I remember again rightly at the very start of it all you'd been diagnosed with diabetes but that yes. wasn't that wasn't the catalyst for change because at first I think no. you just you just started taking meds because that's what they do isn't it you, when you yes. get type 2 diabetes you don't need to change your life when you have diabetes you just need to take the pills and you can carry on doing whatever it's fine that's just so, so what, what was it back then that initially got you to say, all right, okay, fuck this. I've had enough of this change. Um, that was a long time ago, but I think it was just, well, it's the same thing it always has. Like I reach a certain point and then it's like, okay, I'm just too fat for comfort now. And I just, I just need to do something about it. I think I'd hit at that time my heaviest, which um, I've since surpassed. <laughs> BB. <laughs> So, so yeah, that was all. I think I just hit a point where the, the discomfort becomes too much. The yeah. discomfort of, of living unhealthily becomes too much. And then I'm like, it's time to make change. And, and did, did you feel, I mean, I, I know with, you know, I, with my obesity back in the day, I don't think I, I don't remember being fat. I kind of remember living life and all of a sudden waking up one day and thinking, fuck, I'm fat. It, it kind of no. it snuck up on me. I don't I don't know if that's the same for you or something different. No, no, I knew I was fat. It was horrible. You can't fit into anything, man. You can't fit into the bark. You can't fit. Like, that's why I started again. Well, that's not why I started again this time. It's just like, I couldn't even sit on a chair. Like, at the end of 2019, I literally couldn't sit on a chair because, like, the, the seat would cut into the back of my legs. And I was like, I think I've officially hit, like, fat bottom. Like there's rock bottom and then there's like fat bottom and I can't even sit on it because I literally just can't sit. And I was like, I was at the pub, you know, like, woo! and everyone's like, don't you want to sit down? I'm like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I physically can't sit oh. down. Oh, nice. so, yeah. I mean, like if you can't even like the only thing fat people can do is sit down. And if you can't even do that, like <laughs> funny. Yeah. Yeah. it's time for a change now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's funny, you know, thinking back to, to that kind of stuff, but uh, it's, uh, I don't, like I say, I don't remember being fat, it just suddenly kind of sneaking up on me. <laughs> um, but once I realized I was fat, I was like, yeah, this isn't fun at all. And it was, um, it was only then that I started to uh, notice how fat I was. And pictures, you know, I look back at pictures of now with me and my parents and my sister, and it's, it's grim viewing. <laughs> I knew I was fat, but I didn't realize like how fat because like the first time I came to you because I was entering one of those weight loss competitions and I had a friend take photos and I knew I was fat. Like I'd seen the scale yeah. but, like to see because I don't have a full length mirror. I didn't get to see like up here. Yeah. So this is, this is all this is all right. Like <laughs> I can do with a bit of hamster cheek, but like I wasn't seeing the rest. And she took the photo of me in my underwear and I was like, holy fucking Jesus. Like, yeah. You know, like, that's not cool. Like, that was really depressing. I had to drink a lot to get through that. <laughs> Just seeing the picture. <laughs> and, and was that, you know, again, I, I know thinking back, you know, to kind of, so, you know, funny enough, I, I'm, dr I'm drinking coffee here and I went back through one of your first food diaries um, after you've been with us and uh, everything looks all right. And then you see five coffees with one tablespoon of heavy, 
heavy pouring cream with every coffee. Um, and, you know, that soon adds up. And then it was a case of uh, had an emotional day, probably ate a little bit too much, but didn't specify what you ate at all. And, you know, how big were those bad days in terms of your eating? Oh, no. Well, at the beginning, it wasn't bad. And the only reason I had all the cream was because you told me to. <laughs> no, this was, af this was after. This was after that part. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think like when I go quiet, then like I'm having a bad day. Like, so if I'm going, if I'm being quiet and vague, you know, you know that I'm up to no good. So I, I don't, I don't remember. I do remember like not telling you the whole truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Cause, you and every cause other you can client. Be scary. Cause you can be scary. But, um, yeah, like, uh, Oh, I can binge for the Olympics, man. You know, like if there's a category, like people who only know what I look like now, it's like, mm, no, I can binge for the Olympics. Like I'll go out, go out to the pub for drinks and have like two, two and a half bottles of wine, seven to 10 shots of tequila, a couple of double gin and tonics for the road, <laughs> for the road. And then like next day, legit order enough food for four people from Mr. Delivery and eat it all myself. And that was amazing. Like that was my best. Yeah. And then multiply that by 200 and then it's like, Ooh. Yeah. I, I, I just I, described my entire 2019. Yeah. That's uh, it's, and it, it rebounds quickly as well. It doesn't take long for that to suddenly snowball and you're, you're in nowhere land again. It's, it's a, it's a hard place to come back from. Um, yeah. And, but you, you, you come back from it again. <laughs> you know what they say? Six time lucky. Is, is that what they say? I'm, I'm, yes. I, 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 okay. um, it, you know, obviously, you know, you just remarked now you got to a point where, you know, previously the fat just became too fat and too uncomfortable. But yet you've, you've gone back to that before. So why is, what's happened? Is there anything different this time? What's clicked? Um, well, well, the environment change has been like a big factor. Like I'm not, I don't live in like in the city where all my distractions are. Like my triggers are alcohol. Um, my that's it. <laughs> that's my <laughs> oh, trigger. Yeah. Done. Um, so like moving away from that, and I can't say that I'm like peer pressured or influenced at all because like I take responsibility for my own choices. Just being like removed from that and being in an environment that's a lot healthier mentally and physically has been. Um, has been the like driving force. Like yeah. I don't think I could have done this if I were back in Cape Town. Yeah. Like at all. Um, but lockdown kind of helped as well. Weirdly, like keeping me away from um, everything. <laughs> um, and also in Nisla, there's like no conveniences. Like there's no there's no Uber to take you somewhere. There's no yeah. delivery. Yeah. Like so all the thing. You know, I couldn't go out to the pub even if I wanted to because well, there's no Uber. You, have to, you actually have to make an effort. Drive. And you, you can't even leave the house anyway. So yeah. like all the things yeah. that were bad for me were sort of taken away. So it was like, okay, cool. Well, I better, I better focus on me right now. Like, could I have done this back in Cape Town? I don't know. I don't know if I could have. I like well, to think I could have. But well, you, you, you did do it back in Cape Town. You've done it previously yeah, back did. in Cape Town, but it's just never, it's never I lasted. It. Um, never, got, never got this low. Like the no, lowest I ever no. got was like 80. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have wrinkles now. Like I looked in the mirror. My mom's like, "Gosh, you actually do look like you're 40." I'm like, "What the hell is that supposed to mean?" <laughs> like I always say to people, "Look, I have no wrinkles. I'm amazing." It's no, no, I was fat. Yes. <laughs> oh dear. Old woman. You know, um, I, I obviously know. You know, the, the Nisner thing helped a massive amount, and you obviously stayed it here again now. So, are you planning to stay in Nisner forever? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know you're coming to Cape Town, was it today or tomorrow or something, but Come you know, on. yay, yay. Um, but so coming back to Cape Town, which is essentially your city of vice, <laughs> what, what, what's your plan for navigating when you're not in, you know, this environment that you're in now? Um, well, first of all, because of my autoimmune disease, I like, physically can't binge eat anymore. Like I can't, like I ate, I overate the other day, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, not, not, not even in comparison to what I used to. Yeah. And I was sick as a dog for two weeks. Like I'm still sick. So that like eating too much precipitated a flare up that I'm still recovering from. So yeah. like 
even if I wanted to, I like physically literally cannot even eat that much food anymore. So like, yay, that's taken care of. Um, and you know, as regards to the other things, I mean, like I went out for a drink, like I've stopped, stopped drinking while I'm here. Cause it's, it's easy yeah. to not drink while I'm here. But, um, I went out with a friend, um, like a month or two ago and I was like really torn like oh my god should I have a glass of wine oh I don't know and I had like one glass of wine and I filled it with soda water and I drank it for like three hours and it yep. really was it was like super chilled so it is something that I can do and I have done before and I'm just gonna have to every time I have never lived in this body before yeah like, it constantly yeah. amazes me like I did when I was 16 but I've forgotten I'm 43 now that was years ago I have never lived in this body before and I'm constantly amazed at what it can do and, and what it looks like. And it might, might sound vain, but fuck it. I don't care. Everyone always says, Oh, when you, when you lose weight, it's never as good as you thought it was going to be. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's so much better than I ever thought it was going to be. It's amazing. You know? And I don't care if that fucking sounds vain. So I just look at myself and I'm like, I want to be this person and I want to fit into these clothes and I want to be able to fit into this chair and sit down. And if that means, saying no to like a third glass of wine notice i didn't say second <laughs> <laughs> no. then it does and if it means waking up the next day feeling mildly hungover and not ordering enough mr delivery to feed a small family for a week then that's what it means because i honestly i want to be this person and look like this person and live like this person wrinkles yep. and all yeah no i i completely relate to that um you know again from my own point of view it's, you know, I'm, again, my, my fat days were what, back in up to 2005 time. And even now, if I wanted to, I could still binge eat the world. You know, fortunately, uh, I don't, you know, but every day for me is a choice of I'd rather be who I am now in this body than what I was before. And, um, and you know, there are days, you know, like you were saying just a minute ago, how you're still recovering from eating stuff that you probably shouldn't have done today and i don't have it as bad as that but then obviously you know you're also suffering with the autoimmune with the crohn's these days as well but uh it it you know if i eat crap like that for me it stuffs up my digestion for a good three or four days which then affects my training performance which then yeah. makes me be a real fucking grumpy sod um grumpy -er, you mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was only ever grumpy at 6 a.m. when I had to have you fuckers coming through for training. <laughs> I didn't want to be up at that time. No sane person is up at that time. I don't care what people say about early bird catching the worm. Fuck that. No, I like, I like my lay in. Um, but it, it, it does. And your body becomes used to eating a certain way and living a certain way. And as soon as you start to deviate from that, you really notice uh, even stupid things like, you know, you suddenly rebound in water weight. Um, yes. Suddenly, you know, your face gets puffier and blotchy and let alone the digestive stuff and things like that. Um, no, so, yeah, people go on about vanity and, you know, people say, oh, you changed when you lost your weight. Yeah, damn fucking right I changed. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was miserable before. I was unhealthy. I hated life. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know who I was or what I wanted to be. And, you know, now that's changed. Albeit it's taken many years to finally kind of get to that point and see it. Maybe that's old age, getting to 40 and um, all that mm. stuff. Shut up, I'm older <laughs> no, than you. you. Yes, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, and uh, I was going to say, um, in terms of this, this time around, and I guess the times before, what's... What's been the hardest part about starting out, you know, getting uh, started? Right. The hardest part about starting out was, was realizing how far I dropped from where I was. Like the first day back in the gym, like I would never make fun of a, of a, or think poorly of an overweight person in the gym because they're fucking there and it's hard, man. Yeah. Like people don't understand. They say, oh, you know, just eat less and exercise more. It's like, oh, wow, really? Oh, I never thought of that. Ooh, shocker. Spoiler alert. But you get there as an overweight person and like one of the exercises you make me do just to warm up is this yeah i couldn't do it like because my boobs were literally like out here so i literally couldn't even do this you know i couldn't even get through my warm-up and i'm pouring sweat and i've done like two minutes of static warm-up moves and i was almost in tears because 
my body was so massive that I couldn't do anything. And I did a few basic, you know, moves yeah. like shoulder presses and yeah. squats or whatever my limited mobility would allow. And it was just, I mean, I got back and I, you know, Jill, my best friend, and I texted her and I was just almost in tears. And I was like, I, you know, I said, I have to go back because yeah. like, that was the worst yeah. it's ever going to be. But just yeah. to see like yeah. how, how bad I've let it become. It was terrible, you know, just, and I was like, that's it. That's fucking it, man. I can't do it again. Like I can't, like I'm an old woman now. I don't have a lot of energy or time left. Like, this is it. This is it. So, and now, and now I don't take any of that for granted. Now when I do this, I'm like, Oh my God, freedom. freedom. Oh my yeah. God. It's amazing. <laughs> Look, I can do this. Oh! Yeah. It's, yeah. And I'm sitting in a chair. <laughs> and it's not, and it's not breaking. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, l looking back to when I uh, started my first training session, uh, a friend of mine paid for my first training session with a PT back in the UK, or obviously now in the UK again. But uh, the first, other than the kind of bit of warming up and that, the first exercise he got me to do was to lay on the floor and stand up. Yes, you've, <laughs> you guys made me do that. <laughs> yes, I know, because I went through it. <laughs> Man, that was fucking brutal. Um, and I think I, I made it through 25 minutes of the hour session, and that was pretty much it. And yeah, it's and like you say, you you know that's as bad. Well, yeah, hopefully it's as bad as it's ever going to be. And the next session will be easier. And the next session is easier. But um, it was like within a, within a week, I was already like I went. I think um, four times that week. Yeah. Uh, the first week and then the next week already I could see like an uh, improvement um so that that was motivating to me like you talked about motivation like I don't think there is any motivation and I've spoken about it on social media before motivation is bullshit if you sit yeah. around waiting for motivation you're going to turn into a skeleton it's it's action that drives results which drives motivation which keeps the hamster wheel rolling so yeah. like I took action for a week and I already already saw I mean, I was so overweight that I dropped like four kilos in the first week and it's all water weight, but it's still really motivating to see that yeah. number go down on the scale. So I'll take it. I don't care that it's not real fat. It's something. It's some yeah. kind of progress. Yeah. yeah. And I was already like slightly more mobile, slightly stronger. I'm like, come fuckers, let's do this. We're here. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, uh, funny enough, you, you know, you say about that first week and, you know, the water weight dropping off and, you know, I've, I've had conversations with a you know, load of the, the coaching friends about this. You know, I've always been very much more a lifestyle based in the most, but other than my athlete side of things, lifestyle based, progressive over time. And I still thoroughly believe you need that to help change habits, mindset patterns, that kind of thing. But uh, I've recently, uh, I guess the last year, gone over to, especially where there is the potential for it, you know, to get rapid results to start with. Because, you know, there's nothing. When, when you're 40, 50 kilos overweight and you only lose two kilos in week one, as much as that's two kilos, that person could be losing double that. They've got the potential to mm. lose. And, you know, with the, uh, the Elixir program I run, we've, you know, we've had guys lose and, and girls losing, you know, more 12%, so 15, 20 kilos worth of body weight in four weeks. Now, a lot of that is inflammation coming off, uh, water weight, undigested or digested food weight coming out. Um, uh, uh, shit in the, the bowels, all this stuff coming through, and some body fat as well. But the fact is, at the end of that four weeks, they're 15, 20 kilos lighter. That is a massive change for them, and they can immediately feel that difference in their body. Even mm -hmm. though they've still got 30, 40 kilos maybe to lose, you notice that amount of weight coming off your body and that instant feeling of, wow, okay, this is what it feels like. I can actually do this and and go from there. So having that rapid kickstart, um, I'm like I say, I never used to be into it, but these days uh, I'm definitely noticing the, the positive results. Um, again, I, I don't, not with so much motivation, but it's just that that initial kickstart that people people often often need. And it you, do, you need it. You do need it. The first week is the hardest week of your life to yeah. go from like eating and drinking. Like, well, I was never an under eater. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> to, go, to go from like eating and drinking thousands and thousands of calories to like restrictive calories. And now you're waking up at 
whatever hour or going to gym, yeah. it's hard yeah. Yeah. and you need to be able to see the results of that. Like I know everyone's like, oh, I've only been on, on you know, doing this for a week. Why haven't I dropped X amount? But like, I, I think when you're that overweight and that unmotivated, you need that initial like vroom just to keep you going into the second week. Otherwise, honestly, what is the point? Yeah, no, 100% agree with you. And I've definitely changed my style of coaching over to that for those who can, uh, who've got that amount amount to lose. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, as much as I've been there before, I definitely sometimes forget how difficult it was for me back at the start. Because you know, we're now talking, I've been, a, you know, it's been 16 years since I was obese. Um, and okay, so it's been less than 16, 16 months for me, and I can yeah. tell you <laughs> yeah. that, like, it is so hard to make that choice to get up and take action that you actually need to be rewarded for it like you do. Yeah. Because it's like, um, you can either be a victim or a survivor. Like you can sit on the couch and blame life for your problems or you can stand up and you can survive and you can take fucking ownership. And that's what it means to be a survivor. So the fact that you're still there fighting for yourself, I think deserves some kind of reward or medal or trophy. And that is like awesome progress that you can see like boom from week one. Like, yes, you made the right decision. Yes, you are a warrior. Yes, carry on. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, definitely honestly. agree. Definitely agree with that. Um, you know, I mean, like yourself, I didn't. I didn't blame anybody for my uh, my weight gain. I, I ate too much. Sim simple as that. I do blame my parents, obviously, because you know obviously. they're to blame. Um, they're, they're shitty yes. genes passed on to me, and you know you can't have chocolate unless you eat your vegetables. <laughs> all, all this stuff. So now I, I now I just eat the chocolate. And I don't even eat the vegetables. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you, you do need that that reward at the start when you've got a lot to lose to say okay this this first week was shit and torture on me but it was worth it and mm -hmm. i can carry on and i can do this um you know if if you're looking at <laughs> somebody somebody's asked if you could do something different what would it be me yeah you know if you were doing um... this all over again from day one so <laughs> what would you do differently <laughs> <laughs> not regain the weight from day yeah. one like 20 years ago not eat so many twinkies at the boarding at boarding school during lunch break for one um no um you know i kind of think i had to i had to do it so many times just to get just to get the point you know because i clearly there was something that i was just missing the whole time yeah. um not that I wanted to, like it's excruciating to have to regain all that weight and then lose it again. It's so incredibly difficult, but I am the queen of weight loss. You are. Um, maintenance, not at all. I know nothing about maintenance whatsoever. Um, if I had to do it all over again, I'd learn about, I'd learn how to maintain my weight. That's what I do, because I haven't got a clue. I know everything there is to know about weight loss, just shy of being an actual professional. Maintenance, not a sausage. Oh. In terms of queen of weight loss, I think uh, it should have a, a, a weight loss battle, you and Oprah Winfrey, because she's also <laughs> up and down. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I know, I know so much about losing weight. I don't know anything about maintaining it. So in about three or four kilos time, we've got that to look forward to. <laughs> I, I look forward to the War and Peace emails coming through on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do you reckon has been the hardest part about this time round? Has it been hard? Um, some or, of it's been really, um, or because you've done it before, hard. you know, no, it's, I mean, being, cons being consistent is difficult, like doing stuff, even when you don't want to, but I mean, it has become like kind of a habit. It's like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to go to gym. And it's like, well, <laughs> don't care what you want to do. You're going, so who cares? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do think that I didn't give myself a definitely didn't will give myself enough rest breaks. You, you will tell me that too. I know, shocker. Shocker. Um, I definitely was in a calorie deficit for far too long. Um, I mean, it has contributed to like this dramatic transformation, but I don't think it was good for me. Like mentally, I should have taken more refeed. Only after a year, I was like, oh shit, I was supposed to have a refeed meal. <laughs> Literally, like after a year. <laughs> um, so I think I think that might have slowed it down a bit, but I think it would have been a bit better for my, my health because you know my problem is that I tend to do things too quickly and then... I go balls to the wall and then fuck yeah. out like balls to the wall as well. So yeah, I think I think I probably should have done that. Like pace myself a bit. But hey, I weigh like seventy two <laughs> kilos, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, the the you know I mean again we could go through our emails and correspondence over the last what's it it's seven eight years and the amount of times you know oh my god I said you know kind of you need to back off a bit you need to take rest days and these kind of things. Um, but it's, 
it's, I mean, again, I, I think back to when I was doing this and um, there were times where, you know, I definitely, you know, people ask me, what would I do differently? And, you know, if I was doing all this again, and in, like you, I've learned a lot from my failures doing this. So it, it's made me a better coach as part of this. But at the same time, the one thing I would do differently is I would probably hire a coach from the very first time uh, to help me avoid some more of the pitfalls. But uh, like yourself, I would take more rest days and more uh, time to consolidate you know, what I've done, what I've achieved, and not be so hard on myself. Um, oh, God, yes, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I ate an extra biscuit last night because it was, you'll see that in my diary, by the way. <laughs> I ate an extra biscuit last night because it was broken. And as soon as I was like, oh my God, I'm like, Jesus, it was a hundred calories. Calm down. I mean, yeah. for God's sake. <laughs> no, it, it, it means I am, and I, I think, you know, when you've got such a big goal ahead of you, you know, like the weight loss and you know, my weight loss and that, you beca it becomes an all-encompassing, you know, once yeah. one track mind, this is what I got to do. I mean, I remember training uh i mean when i first moved to cape town i was uh cycling to the gym in the morning where i had a, an internship where i was coaching clients for a couple of hours i then go home cycle home get some breakfast go to college for the best part of a few hours train in my break there finish college train after college um then go to virgin active and walk on you know be a lifestyle consultant on the floor for four hours then cycle home again and study and uh, on days where I didn't have one or the other, I'd train again. And yeah, it got me, to, you know, like I said, I mean, I lost 51 kilos in 14 months, so it was fucking quick, but it's huge detriment to myself in the process because I burnt mm. out and I didn't give my, my mind enough chance to heal as well. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know how, your mindset has changed through each time, but I know my mindset at the end of my first, well, my main weight loss, well, I was pretty fucked. Um, but I, I thought I was fat. I was over obsessing with food, what I could eat, what I couldn't eat. Um, and I was, uh, I guess I was training to offset anything I'd eaten rather than I'm eating because I like food. So, so a few interesting things have happened in like the past, like super recently, really, where everything you just said used to be true for me. Yeah. And like, I actually find myself now wanting to take care of myself and wanting to go to gym just because I like the fact that I'm able to move. And like, I'm starting to see like actual definition, which I never have before. Yeah. Like I find there's like there's bones in my shoulder, which apparently <laughs> were always there. Like who knew? And like, I was thinking about having like X for breakfast like not eggs, but like eggs for breakfast. And then like, I, I just thought, well, I don't think that's like the proper nutrition for, for you right now. And I was like, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it was like, I've just worked hard. So like, I want to give like French toast is amazing. I love French toast, but I kind of felt like I wanted to give my body something that was a bit more, had a bit more nutritional value. Yeah. And yeah. I also, yeah, like I said, I just, I, I really, I want to take care of myself. And then I was like, I, I never thought that I looked good, like no matter how much weight I lost. And I went to the bathroom yesterday and we have this big mirror and I looked at myself and I was like, you know what? I kind of think I'm done, hey? Like I'm yeah. sort of, I'm really kind of fading away. Like I sent out a search party for my ass and my boobs and they have not returned. <laughs> um, so honestly, like, I mean, I know that you and I chatted about 65 kilos, but I kind of think I'm done. Like as soon as I hit sub 70, which for me is just a personal goal, which doesn't mean anything other than just being a personal goal. Yeah. I think I'm done. I'm actually quite happy with the way that I look. And that is the first time I can ever say that in my 43 years of existence. Yeah. So and that's, that's a powerful uh, place to be. It is. I mean, I took like, you know, I have my own like group where people where well, women can like follow my journey. And I took a picture of myself in the bathroom um, mirror in black and white, because you said it makes you look thinner. Follow me for more tips. <laughs> It works. And it does. Yeah. And I took a picture and I said, guys, like everyone keeps asking me, when am I going to be done? And I always say 65 because that's what I weighed when I was 17. Um, but honestly, like I didn't weight train when I was 17. So yeah. I think I'm probably yeah. leaner than I am, than I was, yeah. even though I weigh a little bit more. And I think I'm done. Like I'm super happy with the way that I look and just 
all I want to do now is just maintain, well, you know, get to sub 60 just as a personal achievement. So it's only like three kilos, like, yeah, so, yeah. you know, I've got that. Yeah. And then just build muscle mass and get leaner and just get stronger and keep, keep living this fucking awesome life, honestly, you know, and I just started really to, oh God, it's going to sound so lame and cringy, but actually just really caring about the person who I am and who I've become and wanting to take care of myself from like a, a self-care and a health perspective. And it's like literally the first time I've ever felt like that. So I think that's where the transformation has taken place. Yeah, that's, again, if I say it's, it's a powerful place to be. Um, and once, once you get to that point, there is no going back from there. Um, you know, before... My like, clients, I gave away all my fat clothes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's, that's one way to sort it out. <laughs> um, you know, once you get to that point and, and those things click into place, you know, all the, all the things, the, the life things that happened to you, which previously would have fucked everything up and thrown you off and sent you on, it, it doesn't impact, it, it still impacts you because obviously it's, it's life, it's stress, it still affects us, but it doesn't have that same kind of control over us. Um, we understand the triggers now and how to manage them better, uh, even understand when or when we can potentially see a trigger about to happen. Like, you know, if I'm driving down the road, I can see there's a moron up ahead who doesn't know how to use a roundabout and I can already preempt him <laughs> doing something fucking stupid. And, and, you know, this is me now with, okay, I can see there's some potential shit coming up, but it's fine. I know how to handle it. And I think once you get to that point, then, you know, there isn't really anything or anything I found yet for myself that can derail the process. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's still all very new to me, this kind of thing that's literally just been a realization in the past week. So it is going to take some time to become entrenched. Um, like this wanting to eat well, not to lose weight, but just because I want to take care of myself and like liking the person who I am inside and out. Like that, you know, those are all very new things to me. Um, yeah. Am I going to eat too much in future? Of course I am. Am I going to drink too much in future? Of course I am. I mean, what, do you think I'm going to be... <laughs> Being, maintain my calories every single day from now until the day I die. No, of course uh, not. No, but is it no. going to be? Is it going to be a daily thing? No. And like I ate an extra biscuit last night, and normally I'd be like, "Oh my god, oh my god, I must have a low calorie day." And I'm like, "Christ Almighty, it was a hundred calories, and you're already in a deficit. So just shut the fuck up and enjoy your biscuit." You know, really. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Yeah, I'm done. That was all I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> and um. And, uh, and this is something I, I get a lot of and I've had over the last time, you know, people see, you know, either my, my transformation pictures from when I was fat to skinny and running. And then from uh, my powerlifting to shredded on stage for bodybuilding and my inbox, every time I post a picture blows up with, can I lose weight? Because people don't know <laughs> <laughs> lose and loose. Um, <sighs> How how flooded is your inbox when these when you post these things and how many of these people actually listen? It is super flooded <laughs> with random people and I'll give you props for reaching out, but like I'm not really sure what you're wanting from me, you know, like what do you want me to do? And I got so so flooded that I was like, you know what? I actually have a full time job. So I can't take time away to answer and give you like an actual answer. So you know what? I'm going to charge you. So that's what I do now. I say to them, you can call me and we'll chat for 16 minutes and I'll charge you X amount and you tell me what you're struggling with and I'll tell you how I lost weight. And some people who I think might get on with you, I give them your details. Um, Thank you. And then, you know, that's, that's how I do that. Like I don't take the time to respond to everyone because if I did, like I wouldn't have a life. Um, so that's what I do with that. But I, I don't know how much it helps people, honestly, just to tell them to count calories and go to the gym. I mean, they could have read that in the book. I don't know what they're wanting from me. Like, yeah. I didn't take any pills, you know. Everyone, everyone is looking for the next best thing. And what they don't want to hear is that it takes hard work and commitment and consistency because that's boring and it doesn't sell diet books and it's not sexy. Do you know what is sexy? Me and my swimming costume that I can finally fit into. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. <laughs> and, you know, you, also, you mentioned slimming pills and, you know, diets and stuff like that. You know, again, a, a lot of people, you know, one of the first questions they'll ask, albeit privately and not publicly, is, you know, what did you take? And it's like, well, no. Um, I just changed my lifestyle. I stopped eating like an absolute twat. 
and <laughs> and just and just stuck with it consistently. But like I say, it, it doesn't sell. It's not sexy, and people unfortunately they they don't want to hear that. Um, yeah, it's because it's because people only see A like A to the B. They don't see like every like the so many hundreds of mornings and the hundreds of meals that led from one to the other. Yeah. That's all they want. That it looks instant. That's what they want. The instant. They don't see yeah. like the 14, 15, 16, 24 months of work in between the two. Uh, it's, it's a it's a long time, and you know, I mean, I think I can't remember yesterday or the other day I posted about it, but you know, uh, transformations. Um, Oh, yeah, it was a couple of days ago. It was in my 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 little rant on Instagram. Um, <laughs> it's it is transforming your, yourself and doing this over a long period of time for the rest of your life. It's mm. it's a, it's not just eight, ten, twelve weeks. It's constant work. For, and for people like you and I, who have been, you know, morbidly obese, and I'll also give you know for the flip side for those who've had you know anorexia bulimia uh you know on the other side it's the same for, for them as well in that it, this will always be a battle of some description to fight you know for want of a better word inner demons and stuff and and things to to keep yourself in you know in a healthy space um you know i know when i was training you guys in that 6 a.m slot i i i loved i always had fun during the sessions but for me to get up early like that um my mental health was you know, i just wasn't getting the right sleep and my my reason for stopping those morning sessions in the end was purely because i couldn't do it mentally anymore my mental health mm. was, was suffering and i needed to take that financial hit just to put my own health first and as soon as i stopped that massive release off of my body and the you know, fog lifted and I be it became better again or not you know instantly like wow unicorns and rainbows ah! and <laughs> all this stuff but you know and it's it's learning to take those kind of steps and acknowledge what these issues are um, but I think a lot of people just uh, they they don't know how to either confront the issues or they try to shy away from the issues, um, but it's it's never pretty facing the issues. Um, no, uh, but that's what you're. I mean, that's what you you got to do. But like, it kind of happens without you really noticing. Like coping mechanisms. Like, my father was diagnosed with cancer last year. I mean, he's fine now, but like that was pretty much like the worst day of my life. Yeah, and it was it was like the first time, like I self comfort with food, like when I'm sick or whatever, like I, I comfort with food and I didn't even think about eating food. Cause I was like, you know what? I can eat all the pizza in the world. And when I'm done, my father will still have cancer. So what is yeah. the fucking point? Yeah. What is the point? Like, and there's no you, point and you'll feel even more shit because you've just, and you'll be fat and, and you'll be like guilty crap. and you'll be yeah. full. So what is the point? So I just, I went for a run and had a cry and came back and that was how I dealt with that. You know, and I haven't comfort eaten since then. Even when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, well, that's because I couldn't eat anything. <laughs> um, but <yeah. laughs> what what are you know? So before you've you know you've had comfort eating as your 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 way to to deal with things. How have you? Oh, drinking as well. And drinking, and drinking, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I remember some of your drinking stories. Um, <laughs> yeah, they they evaded the the email check-ins, but they certainly made it onto social what? media. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what are your coping mechanisms? How do you, you know, when you see these, you know, potentially trigger things coming up these days, how do you cope with them instead? You know, what have you put certain mental things in place that will help you? Yeah, so I chat to I chat to Jill, my best friend, and my yep. sister. Um, cause they also both been on this for ages and they both have very, all have very good advice. So I have a couple of people who I chat to like vent, sometimes you just need to vent or like my trip to Cape Town tomorrow. I'm like super anxious about like when I get back, am I just going to drink my face off and eat everything? I mean, it's only 12 days. Goodness sake. I'm not going to gain 64 kilos in 12 days. That would be impressive. That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> but, yeah, challenge accepted. Um, but it's not, it's not that I want to know, like, 
can I maintain like a healthy lifestyle in a city that I love without getting shit faced every night? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I chat to, I chat to people who I trust, who I know can talk me down from the ledge. I go for a walk. It sounds lame. It's something that you always recommend, but it actually does help me because we live in a very rural foresty nature kind of area. So it's really beautiful. It's not like walking around the suburbs. So I just go for a walk in the forest, which is literally two minutes away yeah. or the lagoon. So that's really helpful. Um, or I just sit and watch TV with my parents and try to regain some sense of normalcy. And not, I find that when you live in your head too much, you tend to lose all sense of perspective. So I just go out of my bedroom. Like also in Cape Town, I lived alone. Yeah. So no one saw me eat, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very easy to eat a KFC meal for four when there's no one watching. It's very <laughs> difficult to do that when you live with your parents, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, or, or a roommate or anyone. Anyway, yeah, you know, no, so. that's right, yeah. Uh, so shit. actually that is one of the when i move back to cape town i'm going to be moving in with a friend of mine so that's that's a thing too so that is also you know having someone there like when you live alone and something really shitty happens i never drank at home i'm mm. not a, a solo drinker but i would eat so <clears throat> being around people helps that a lot because i am a social person so being able yep. to share things or go for a walk and yeah that's that's all i've needed really it's, it's yeah the, the walking does help um Again, like you say, it's. Uh, I, I, I talk about going for walks often. I think walking is massively underrated for. Yes, a I agree. Variety of purposes, not just kind of clearing your mind, but uh, so many health benefits with it as well. But um, uh, have you have uh, one of your uh, issues you always struggle with, and likely an issue now? You hated sleeping. <laughs> oh, oh! I've been awake since two <laughs> since two a.m. So I've had three hours sleep. You'll see it in my chicken. <laughs> So, so sleep is still <laughs> problematic. I still hate sleeping. I've literally been awake since two and then I tried to get back to sleep because I have to, with my autoimmune fine, yeah. I have to get up to go to the loo a lot in the night. So I got up at two and I tried to get back to sleep and I was like, oh, this isn't working. And I was like, well, my alarm's going to go off just now anyway, so I might as well stay awake. So like, yeah, I don't like sleeping. And I know that like, it's supposed to affect your leptin and your ghrelin and all this other, all these yeah. other hormones and whatever, but I don't eat more when I'm tired. I just force myself not to. I am hungry, yeah. but I just don't eat more. So if you don't eat more, how can you gain weight? No, that, that's true. Um, that is, that is true. Uh, yeah. But like, like you say, for a lot of people who don't have that same uh, control or place where you're at now, those, you know, that, uh, that lack of sleep or quality sleep does, play massively on the hunger signals and uh, energy levels and uh, yeah it, it can be massively problematic well, as well you know, I would not advocate it do not no. live the way I live <laughs> I have been awake since since uh, 216 according to my Fitbit mm. but I look fabulous darling <laughs> yes you do yes you do <laughs> oh dear it's, it's been one hell of a journey but... Boy, it's not over yet no, no, <laughs> no, it's not. No. We're still in phase one. We still got all the fun of phase two to look forward to. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward, looking to, forward to eating more food. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've we've pushed you up to maintenance now as well, haven't we? Or close close enough. We're, close to it. Yeah. yeah, I know. I get to eat biscuits. It's awesome. <laughs> but like, not just the normal biscuits. The fancy biscuits. Oh wow! Wow. So fancy so not, biscuits. <laughs> what are your fancy biscuits? They're triple chocolate chip biscuits from Woolworths, the fancy oh, ones. Holy fuck. The ones, that, the the ones that look like they're in the, the homemade, you know, the homemade yeah, like, yeah. Um, brown paper with the string. Oh, pushing Those the boats ones. out, getting fancy as fuck now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, maintenance calories are good. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I don't even know what I'm at mate, now. I just eat at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving moving uh, wife, daughter two dogs uh during a global pandemic um was i decided now is not the right time to uh really? focus, focus on my my eating so i'll uh, um in fact my, my eating is probably i wouldn't say my eating is terrible now because you obviously get used to eating a certain way and you kind of guesstimate what's what but um yeah. at some point i'll have to start to refocus on my nutrition again uh, with competitions coming up this year um, because you know as we've said earlier it, it does impact the way you feel and the way you move and especially training when it becomes a big part of your day mm -hmm. um, so yeah but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you actually on maintenance calories and uh, maintaining, Me too. <laughs> maintaining. 
I actually think you'll lose more at maintenance for a period as well. Bring it on. I don't yeah. know. I'm already wearing a small from Total Sports. I don't know what else I can get into. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever say that. <laughs> it's, it's expensive losing weight as well. New clothes. I just and everything. bought a whole load of gym gear at Christmas and now it's all too big for me, which sounds like problems you want to have, but I'm poor. I work for myself. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's uh, you know when we moved uh, from SA to back to Cape Town, Michaela made me go through all my wardrobes because I've got clothes for 100 kilos, 110 kilos, and 120 yes. kilos because yes. I do depending on what I'm doing, I fluctuate between. Okay, I haven't been down 100 kilos for a while now, but um, they're always a kind of a backup just in case I decide I want to get lean again. Um, but uh, it's expensive losing weight in that regard and buying new clothes yes. and. Um, and then I've got other clothes, you know, you'll find now as well that potentially you'll buy some clothes now, but as we start to uh, change your body shape by adding more lean muscle mass and that, these clothes that you've just bought because of your current frame, your weight will stay the same, but will no longer fit you because, you know, your, your, yeah, your, your waist is coming in more, your butt's going out more, your shoulders and back change. Um, so, yeah. Bring it on. I picked up a bra off the rack at Woolworths and took it home and it fitted. Now, I know you're a guy and you don't understand what that means, but can I just tell you that that is amazing? It is so much easier buying a 36D than it is buying a 48 double F. okay? Yeah. I've had boobs. And cheaper. I've had boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy a lovely black lace bra to put them in? I didn't. I'm kinky. I always go topless like that. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no. Well, it's um, yeah. I'm I'm happy to see you at maintenance now and uh, off of off of the calorie deficits. You know, it's it's been a mad year or just over a year now of heavy drawing. You've done phenomenally well. Um, I I don't think people truly understand the kind of change it uh, and people go through and what it takes to do what you've done there. So, you know, always massive respect for you for doing that uh and again <laughs> there's, there's respect each time but this is the last time <laughs> this, is, this is the sixth time this, this is the last time we're doing it um and you know i said to you i think in an email a few weeks back i do feel that this things are different this time than they have been i before. feel it too like people have said to me that my mindset is different just the way i feel about myself it just it does feel different and like i said of course i'm going to eat too much of course i'm going to drink too much but that will be the exception it won't be the rule yeah. And it's just, I'm really just enjoying discovering who I am because losing weight has been my entire identity and my ent entire internal narrative for 20 years. Yeah. So to not have yeah. that anymore, it's kind of like now I'm sort of discovering who I am without that because thinking about food and calories and weight loss and my success or failure it has literally been my entire internal narrative for my whole adult life. And I don't have that anymore now. So it's like, what do you do with all this headspace? Like, there's, there's nothing in my head <laughs> except don't eat the biscuit, <laughs> don't eat um, the biscuit. or eat the biscuit if you can fit it in your macros That's it. But or, like, or just because you want it and it doesn't matter yeah well yeah but i mean like i mean i'm joking about that but yeah. what i am trying to say is that like it is now and i have to find myself <laughs> <laughs> who am i when i'm not losing weight and being sarcastic you know is it going to be because you know, i know you're doing personal trainer qualification and that kind of thing is is that going to be is that purely for your own understanding and knowledge going forward or are you looking to help people you like you know no i want to i do want to help people i've already started like with the people who inbox me like to chat to them about stuff obviously yeah. i'm not qualified yet but yo i know a lot about it um so i do it makes me it makes me feel better like being able to help other people, you know, I mean, we're all supposed to make our own mistakes, but if, if I can help other people like not make the same mistakes and it just, it energizes and inspires me and makes me want to, want to carry out. It makes me feel like I, you know, have a purpose. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, I, I, I get it. I mean, you know, this is, that's why I started, you know, myself 16 years ago doing this. Um, I wanted to help other people do it. Um, um, I wish more people really wanted it rather than like the idea of it. Um, yeah. And that's something that you'll have to <laughs> come to terms with when you start helping people. Like, Is that fuck? the point where I start drinking again? <laughs> it could well be. <laughs> Why do you think I started the donut company? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, you know, when that does happen, you know, it's, uh, 
uh, it, it does get challenging mentally to, you know, because again, you've done it. You've got somebody here who's paying you, who wants to do it. And you, it's hard to, okay, you want to do it. You're paying me to do it. Why aren't you doing it? And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, uh, it, you start to, I mean, I, okay, you might, you might be different. I've got no idea. We'll see how it goes, but. I mean, I take it personally. I want. To. I do take it personally. Yeah. I'm like, what did I do wrong? What didn't yeah. I tell them? Why? Why didn't I adapt that better to fit their lifestyle? Why? I feel like I failed. Yeah. Um, but in actual fact, and again, I chat with other coaches about this. It's it's not. In most cases, I know there are some really shitty coaches out there, but for like myself. <laughs> Maybe I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you're you're too close to to be a too close to a situation to be a shitty coach with it. Um, but there are definitely a lot of others who are shit um but you know i chat with others who are equally good at this kind of stuff and it's they they all the same but in actual fact we we you know we chat with each other about what we've done like nope definitely not our fault um yeah but it, it takes almost that sounding board with other people to realize that no nope, okay i actually wasn't the the issue here um it was it was them and you know I try not to judge people for why they haven't done it because, you know, I used to be that person. I remember going through the ads at the back of a newspaper for, uh, what was it? It was um, tablets which, uh, which contain pineapple, uh, pineapple digestive enzymes, which would help melt the fat. <laughs> uh, this is back Sounds the legit. <laughs> Sounds legit. <laughs> I, I mean, this is before, this is pre-internet days. I couldn't even Google this shit. I mean, I was reading it in the back of the paper. I'm like, yeah, this this is it. This is going to be the turning point. And uh, it wasn't. I didn't even. I didn't even have the. Uh, I didn't even order the stuff in the end. Um, I was too lazy to do that. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a struggle, and that's something that um, I'll happily converse with you over when you do it more. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I had someone I had someone get hold of me today who's on this that that, that diet where they that you eat 800 calories and take the HCG oh, injections and it just it just makes me so angry that people in the medical profession are like um, endorsing this yeah and you know isn't the first line of the Hippocratic oath first do no harm you know it just seems to me like the most harmful thing you can do and this girl was like almost in tears and I said I will help you but yeah. don't don't take any more of those fucking injections. No, uh, the amount of doctors think handing out those and uh, heavy pharmaceutical appetite suppressants and uh, all, all kinds of things. Um, no, it's, but you know, and what a lot of people don't realize is most doctors, GPs, and you no, know, uh, do not have or have very, very basic understanding of nutrition. They yeah. literally cover one module on it or something like that during, you know, all their years of study. And, you know, they, have, it, they just got no knowledge of it. And, but people trust them because they're doctors. Um, yeah, I've so, come to learn that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so It's all yeah. best guess, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you've got all this to look forward to. Woohoo! <laughs> While look. maintaining my weight, which I have <laughs> never done before. Yeah, I see you. You've got some fun times ahead. You've got some fun times ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh well, like I say, I've you know massive respect to you, Nicola, for for your journey and what you've done. I do look forward to seeing you maintaining it going forward, and seeing you help others do it as well. Um, you know, if I do think you'll have a unique perspective to help others with it, the same as I did and I do, um, and I think that is missing in a lot of coaching. Um, so there's no reason why you can't have huge success with it. So, um, oh, well, I learned it all from you, David. Well, I am pretty fucking good. So, uh, <laughs> and modest, yeah. <laughs> always modest, always modest. Um, all right. Okay. I'm going to let you get off. Uh, thank you for chatting. I'm going gonna... to, no, I can't get off. I'm in nice and I'm all by myself. So, you know, but I am going to go make a tuna salad for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how times have changed. Wow. Fuck me. <laughs> oh, dear. Nicola, have a nice day. Enjoy your trip to Cape Town. Thank you. Uh, I will. Sorry I'm not going to be you'll, around you'll to, hear all about it. to catch up with some cocktails. I do miss my cocktails right now um, with nothing open in the UK. But uh, Oh, make... that's right. Everything's open here. It's fabulous. <sighs> yeah, that's, yeah. UK hopefully soon. 
uh, and then I'll have 10 or 15 cocktails and I'll be fine again. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Okay. I plan on having one Singapore sling because I've never had one and it sounds intriguing. I don't think I've had one. I normally have Long Islands because they got five, five shots of white. <laughs> That's normally why I would have them too. <laughs> it's, it's economy. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> hey, right. Before this okay. goes completely off on another fucking okay. tangent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Enjoy. Yeah, it was good to chat. Down, Thanks, man. And, uh, I'll chat to you soon. Eh? Yeah. All right. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Okay. Bye.